Welcome to the National Institute for Health and Care Research and this professional development webinar series. I'm Ginny Haddock Miller. I'm one of the facilitators of the mentoring programme. This session focuses on mentoring and work life balance and will be less than 10 minutes. So, within this session, we're going to explore the factors that influence work life balance. I'm going to show you a number of tools to explore and support work life balance. And then I have a number of reflective questions and some guidance around uh, tools to further support. So, spotlight on work life balance. Typically, it's described as the relationship between work and other areas of our lives. It requires the ongoing assessment and evaluation of all areas of our lives to achieve well-being. And of course, it's personal and unique to each individual. And well-being is an outcome of our work-life balance. There are a number of tools and techniques that help us to focus on work-life balance. I'm going to show you the first two in this session, the four-stage model for work-life balance and the Wheel of Life Assessment tool. The third and the fourth, powerful questions and goal setting, are covered in other sessions. The four-stage model for work-life balance was developed by myself and my colleague, Elliot Tom, in 2020 and provides a holistic overview of the, the topics that enhance and enable work-life balance. It focuses on four specific themes, each of which are essential to supporting both mentees and mentors as to work out how they want to live their lives. The four-stage model of work-life balance consists of positive view of self, success and life satisfaction, resilience in coping with setbacks, decision-making and negotiation. I'm going to briefly touch on each of these areas. So the first area, positive view of self, is about focusing on three areas, self-insight, so developing our knowledge, our skills, our behaviours, our self-esteem, the overall value we place on ourselves, and the locus of control, the extent to which we're able to control or have power over events in our lives, and really understanding what we are able to control and what we're not. Success and life satisfaction is focusing on the importance that we place on particular aspects of our lives, our beliefs, our values, how they're formed, our mindset. But how we gain success and how we perceive life satisfaction are, are crucial in that conversation. Resilience and coping with setbacks, a really critical area for work-life balance, often described as our ability to bounce back, to deal with disruptions, our capacity to adapt in changing circumstances and to maintain our energy levels and our focus. And the fourth conversation, our decision-making and negotiation. So exploring our internal external context, what conversations need to take place in order for change to occur? Who do we need to negotiate with? With ourselves, with others? How do we negotiate? Practicing those negotiation skills in our mentoring relationships. So again, here's an overview of the model that is described in detail in the text that was on the, the right hand side, which is referenced also on the slide here. I've also extracted just a number of questions uh, to support with those conversations around the four stages for work-life balance. There are many, many questions in the text and I've given some examples on this slide. Now, the second tool, the Wheel of Life, it's a very popular visual tool or worksheet that can be used in mentoring to understand how balanced or fulfilled our lives are in this moment. So it's a snapshot in time and it can provide a focus and a direction for the individual and in the mentoring relationship. The wheel consists typically of six to 10 categories or dimensions that we all consider that are important to a whole or balanced life. Some of these dimensions might be unique to each of us. 
these are the three stages. The first stage, as I've mentioned, is to identify six to 10 dimensions that are important to us. That might be roles, it might be areas of life, or it might be combination. And I'll go into further detail in a moment. The second stage, assessing our current level of happiness or fulfillment in each of those areas, and then discussing the ideal. And the third, the plan. So moving from the current to the desired state of work-life balance and the conversation around that. So in the first stage, we're looking at potential dimensions. And uh, these are some examples on the slide of dimensions and we'll rate our current level of satisfaction and map this onto an image. And this gives us an immediate overview of our current life balance. And here's a visual of some of the dimensions or categories that we may select, some of which will be perhaps generic to majority of us, some of which might be unique. So for example, professional development, career, health, physical and mental, we might decide we want to separate out our mental health and our physical health, our emotional well-being, for example. In the second stage, we have the conversation around the current level and the desired state, some, some exploratory questions. I've given some examples here on this slide. So for example, when we have mapped our world of life, how do we feel about our life as we look at the wheel? Are there any surprises? Which of these dimensions would you most like to improve? If we're a score of four or five, what would a score of 10 look like? Or even if we were to move one or two points incrementally, what would that look like? And here's just an example of a will of life that's been completed and mapped out. So we can see how it's a really helpful visual to get an immediate view. Are there any imbalances? Are there areas where we're not paying sufficient attention to in our lives? In the third stage, we're planning the moving forward, moving to the desired state. And some of that is thinking about how can we make space for changes in our lives? So if there is an aspect we want to change in our world of life, a particular dimension we want to focus on, often it does involve making space for change. And how do we do that? So again, on this slide, I've given you a selection of questions to help with that conversation that focuses on this aspect. And then on this slide, I've given you a summary of the steps, which you can read more about. I've adapted that from my colleague, Paula King from Kingston College. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the recording, the what next, so just some reflective questions that you can take away uh, to think about following, uh, following listening to this. And then some key resources. So we've developed an online topic guide to support. It contains some links to further reading. And on this slide, uh, I've also just noted just a few, a few key pieces of information, uh, a book, a journal article that you may want to read. And then of course we have the email to the development and support team for the mentoring program, should you have any questions at all. Thanks so much for listening today.